welcome to Mindset Mondays with DTK. This is episode number 114 in an ongoing series of broadcasts designed for folk who are more focused on getting better at being who they be, who they are at their core, than getting distracted by getting better at doing what they do. Right? This is an opportunity to play with new ideas, play with new concepts, and try on new mindsets. So today, my God, this is a, this is a day about capacity. And, and given that we are all being tested right now, I thought this one was rather fitting for the day, right? So it was about the beginning of 2016, and I had several different programs that I was involved in that through a, a nightmare of confluence of conditions, the, <laughs> uh, all of them started at the same time. I had said yes to the inaugural cohort of conversational intelligence, that was both a program and the certification. I had said yes to the inaugural cohort of Team Coaching International's team or certified team coach uh, uh, certification program. I had also said yes to an international program that was piloting um, around ROI, return on investment of coaching. And all of those things started within about five weeks of each other. Um, and the programs were anywhere from four to eight months. It was insane. Oh, yeah. And I had a full coaching practice at the time. So I, I learned a lot about my capability and my capacity um, in a very, very short period of time. And so that's what, as I looked at the quote that we're playing with today, that's the one, that's the period of time that popped up in my mind. And I'm going to do it with this one instead. Sorry about that. Um, boy, technology is fun. So you have more capability than you think you do, but you will never see it unless you place a demand on yourself for more. And, and it's fascinating. I didn't place the demand on myself intentionally. In fact, most of the times I've tested myself, truly, I haven't done it intentionally. I've sort of fallen back, backward, bass backwards into it, or I have laid too much on my schedule without paying attention. Um, so I'd like to say in 2016, I did it on purpose. I didn't. However, I decided to stay in it on purpose. It was very intentional about, uh, at first it was, no, I've committed to these things. I don't want to let anybody down. Then it was, oh my God, I committed to these things. I don't want to be a wuss and drop. And then it was deciding for myself. It was at a time in my practice where those, the things that I was working on really served. It was a time where I had a little flexibility in home and work and the rest of my work schedule, or at least I, I could convince myself I did. Um, and I created structures and systems, right? The, the and, and I, it'd be interesting if I had decided in advance, it would have made the first couple of months a little less stressful. But when I decided, when I decided to, put, to allow that demand to be on myself. When I decided to accept that challenge, that's when things changed, right? And, and despite the immense professional expansion, the greatest gift was on the personal side. My metal got tested. Uh, I, <laughs> my ability to make a decision and live with the natural consequences, be they positive or negative, that was a huge, opportunity for me. I have a, a coach friend of mine who says, desire is expansion seeking to express itself. Um, I had a strong desire to be in those programs, to learn each of those bodies of work or to get the next level of mastery at each of those. And, and I had a desire to serve my clients in the way that my practice was wired at that time. And the decision to stay in, to accept that challenge, to test my capability and certainly expand my capacity. Um, that was remarkable. That was where the real growth is. And I look at what's happening right now, right? Our frontline workers, be they first responders, healthcare, essential businesses, they are all being tested. Their capacity, right? And look at this again. You have more capability than you think you do. You'll never see it unless a demand, you place a demand on yourself for more. All right, granted, they may not have placed this demand on themselves, but they are deciding to show up every day. 
whether it's a sense of duty, a sense of responsibility, whether it's a calling or whether it's because it's the right thing for them to be doing right now. It's the way that they can serve our frontline folk. Rick Tamlin doesn't call them frontline workers. He calls them light workers. When these frontline workers show up every day for ridiculously taxing and stressful and long and energetically draining days, they've decided to expand their capability. They've decided to test their capability. They've decided that they will handle this. And I think to a certain extent, we're called upon to make the same decision. No, I'm not a frontline worker. Yes, there are programs out there like COVID Connector 2020, where we're pulling together 10,000 certified coaches to serve the frontline workers. I'm not stretching the way they are. They're in another, that's at another level, but I can serve them. And there are people all around the globe leaning into this initiative to serve them as well. And we are all called upon, we are all being given the opportunity to place a demand on ourselves. And let me tell you, for those folk that are, <laughs> that are having to steward their children through this semester education, whether they're five-year-olds or the 25-year-olds home from grad school, it doesn't matter. Being there to steward them or support them or give them a shoulder to lean on, that may be all that they can handle that day. For those of us who are being there to support the children at home, continuing their education, getting up, supporting the kids, feeding the kids, feeding yourself and going back to bed, that may be all that you have the capacity or the capability for. But placing that demand, the demand that's being placed on us right now is a powerful opportunity to test the idea that we have more capability and more capacity than we would ever normally see. The generation born in 19... Beginning in 1928, they're called the greatest generation. They're the ones who survived the Depression and World War II. A demand was placed on them that was extreme and gave them the opportunity to see how incredibly expansive their capabilities and their capacities were and are. We're talking to our son who's, who was born in March of 2001. He only knows the post 9-11 world. He was only conscious of anything outside of his immediate sphere in a post 9-11 world. We had a dramatic shift. Things changed dramatically on 9-11 for us. We had it before and we had an after. Josh is take on this is very interesting having a before and after this is the first event that is a pivotal reshaping of a worldview it'd be interesting to see how he sees things changing we had more freedom and flexibility freedom of movement movement and flexibility of movement before 9 11 and there was a dramatic change we had to accept certain changes wow we're going to be accepting a lot of new changes going forward. And yes, Lisa, we are always hardier than we think we are. We can always handle more than we think we can. There are industries that thought they would never recover from 9-11. And there are industries and in individual businesses right now who think they'll never be able to recover from this. And then it's amazing how much hardier we are than we think. You have more capability than you think you do, but you'll never see it unless you place a demand on yourself for more. <laughs> There's a saying that God gives us what we can handle and nothing more. So, sometimes I wish you didn't have such a high opinion of us. Um, I think that's something that I have been relying on in the last several months. We are 46 days into quarantine in this house. Um, for an extrovert, that's eight years. 
<laughs> and I am learning how much broader my capabilities are and my capacity is. I have learned so much about my ability to shift the way I connect, to shift the way I think, to shift the way I focus. I wonder what things are going to be like three, six, 12, 18 months from now when we get to you know, successive stages of new normal. How will our world change and how will, it, how will we have changed in the process? It's a fascinating opportunity for us to, to play with mindset here. Who do we want to be? If achieving more requires becoming more, oops, try to point in the mirror. If achieving more requires becoming more, as we become more, as we go through this test, as we, as we thrive through this demand, who will we become? Who will our communities become? Our counties, our cities, our states, our country, our world. Who are we becoming in all of this? And, and as I ask that, that question, the quote that comes up again is Alan Kay's quote about the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So who are we becoming? Whatever the hell we want to invent. Whatever we wish to invent. Whatever we can envision, we can invent. And that's our opportunity. Introvert, extrovert, doesn't matter at this point. This is our chance to define what we want to become. And this isn't about Pollyanna or <laughs> looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. Yes, all of us have some place in our world within a couple of degrees of separation that we're being impacted. Some of us are being impacted dramatically, directly. Not what we have. But there's so many out there who are. We have so much more capability and capacity than we imagine. And we get to look back and say, oh my goodness, I am hardier than I thought I was. But what if we look now? Forget getting through it and looking backwards. What if we looked right now and acknowledged the fact that we have much broader capability and much grander capacity than we think we do? And lean into that belief. We can get through anything. We can also thrive during anything. So that's the opportunity for this week is to play with what mindsets will serve you moving forward. How can you look at your capacity and your capability in this time of added demand and shift your experience? We do not see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. So how do you choose to see yourself? So again, between now and next week, I, I invite you to come to mind to the Facebook group, which is Facebook's facebook.com slash groups slash mindset Mondays. Please join the conversation. And again, every Monday here at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And between now and next week, what mindset will you choose? <laughs>